okay so today we will start chapter 7 uh, which is relational database uh, schema mapping from er to double er diagram uh, so in uh, we already learned how to do er and double er diagram um, and we do this double er and double uh, or er diagram to actually model our data to show how our, our data will be organized but when we want to actually implement our database we have to uh, create tables and columns right so from an er diagram it's not clear uh, exactly what will be our tables and what will be our columns uh, especially when we look at the different types of attributes or the different type of uh, relationships uh, we don't know exactly how they will translate to tables and columns so to um, uh, to solve that problem we will have to map our er or double er diagram into a relational schema so if you look at the relational schema then it is clear that which one is table which one is column we can also see the primary keys which are underlined and also the foreign keys which are shown using arrow so in this chapter we will actually learn how to uh, map the different components in a double er or er diagram and uh, create our relational schema once we have our relational schema we can move forward and implement our database so um, now we are uh, going to go step by step in today's lecture we will only go through step one two and step six these uh, three steps uh, and the other steps will be covered in the next offline class okay so first let's go to step one which is mapping of regular entity types regular entity types are uh, entity types which um, are shown in a single rectangle box right so uh, in here we have three regular entity types which is employee department and project uh, and dependent here is a weak entity type so for step one we will not map the weak entity type we will only go for the regular ones so uh, for each regular entity type we will have a separate table so let's do that let's create uh, separate tables for the uh, three entity types so first one is for employee then there we have a uh, entity type called department and then we have an entity type called project okay and we will give names to each one oh, sorry, sorry this was employee so the name of the table will be the same as the name of the entity type department and we have project uh, now each uh, em, uh, for each table we will need columns right so for employee we have a lot of attributes all of these attributes will be columns so first of all we will take the simple attributes as uh, separate columns so here we have five simple attributes SSN birth date address salary and sex we will take all these five and uh, create separate attributes so let's do that so we have ssn then we have um, birth date then we have address salary So we have added all the five simple attributes now we have a composite attribute which is name uh, first name middle initial and last name okay so uh, for first uh, in a composite attribute what we have to do is we have to only add the simple components as a um, the simple components as a separate column so simple components are the components of a composite attribute which do not have any further breakdown so here name has three components and all of them are simple because they don't have any further breakdown so we will take these three components as three different columns in our table so we have to add first name middle initial and last name so these are our uh, all our columns in the employee table so let's just separate the columns okay. 
so in employee we can also see that uh, employee has one key attribute which is ssn and every table must have a primary key so we will add the uh, key attribute from ssn or we will make the key attribute of employee as a primary key in the employee table and since we only have one key attribute that will become the primary key if we had more than one then we will select only one of them as the primary key okay so here we have uh, ssn as the primary key so i will underline the primary key ssn so for uh, now we will only map the simple and composite attributes we will not map the multi-valued attributes we will ignore the multi-valued attributes so if you look at the second table which is department we have three attributes here two of them are simple name and number and one of them is uh, multi-valued so we will ignore the multi-valued attribute for now okay so for now we add name and number as two different columns in our department table so we have name and then we have number these are our two columns and we uh, both of them are our key attributes in the table so both of them are underlined here so we will select only one of them as our primary key so we can select name or number so I'm selecting number uh, it is better to select It is better to select the um, attribute which has a smaller value in length as my primary key so name can be the primary key or number can be the primary key but because number is more likely to have a smaller value uh, uh, in length compared to a name of the department that's why I'm selecting number because that is the standard practice but either one will be correct uh, if I go back to our ER diagram then we can see that in project we have again three attributes which are all simple so i will add all of them and name and number are again two key attributes i will select one of them as my primary key so uh, number i'm selecting number as the primary key here so let's just add the three attributes uh, so it was number name and location so our three columns and I am again due to just standard practice I was I'm selecting number but if you choose name that is also fine um, so that's how we will be mapping the sim uh, regular entity types uh, and we will be only mapping the simple attributes and the composite attributes for now uh, one thing about composite attributes let's say I have a composite attribute a and I have some components B C D and E in this case um, in this case what I will do is I will select I will take B D and E as my um, simple components and I will add these three as my separate columns I will not take A or C because they have more breakdowns but B D and E are simple components because they don't have any further breakdowns so in that case B D and E will be added Uh, one last thing about composite attributes so let's say I have a table called T and I have an attribute A which is also the key attribute and the key attribute is again a composite attribute let's say we have some components B and C so in this case we know that in table T we will only have the simple components of A which is B and C right but A there is no A right because A is not a simple component so we know that if we concatenate or combine b and c we get a and a is a key attribute which means that if we have to give a primary key in this table then b and c together will form my primary key if i concatenate these two values i get a unique value which forms the value of a okay so that's why in this table i have a combined uh, or a combination primary key which means the primary key is composed of multiple attributes So 
so let's move on to the second step which is mapping of weak entity types so if you notice in this diagram we only have one weak entity type which is dependent right so we have to map dependent next so to map dependent we will follow uh, initially we will follow the same rule as before we will create a separate table and all simple and composite attributes will be included just like before so let's do that uh, let's have a table for dependent dependent and let's add the columns there are four simple attributes in this table so I will add the four um, attributes so let's say So now we know that dependent does not have any key attribute because it is uh, a weak entity. So it is not possible yet to actually identify each dependent separately or uniquely. So now we have to uh, take help from something to identify each dependent and dependent has a uh, identifying relationship uh, shown in a double diamond box. So this relationship is with employee which is a regular entity type. So we have to take the, uh, you know, for a weak entity, we have to take the primary key of the entity type that has an identifying relationship with the weak entity and add it as a foreign key in the weak entity table. So I will take the primary key of employee and add it as foreign key in the weak entity table. Uh, so the primary key of employee is SSN. So I will add SSN here. So all of these are my separate columns and since SSN was a foreign key, I have to show it using the arrow. The head of the arrow will always point to the original table, so the referenced table, okay. Uh, and the arrow will start at the referencing table. And uh, the primary key of this table will be the combination of the employee's um, primary key and any partial key that is present in dependent table so name is actually a partial key in dependent table if you notice uh, independent the name has a dotted underline so dotted underline means it's a partial uh, partial key partial key means it's part of a primary key so it's not the complete primary key but it's part of it that's why i have to include it in the primary key um, so now uh, my dependent table has a primary key which is a combination of ssn and name now if I have to add the primary key of dependent into another table as a foreign key then I have to take both the columns. I have to take both the columns as my primary key. If any primary key is composed of three columns or five columns and if I take that uh, primary key into another table as a foreign key I have to take all three or five columns okay because I have to take the whole primary key. If I take only one column uh, out of like three columns that com uh, combined together make my primary key then I am taking the partial primary key and not the whole primary key. So I have to take the whole primary key into any table as foreign key if I am taking foreign key from that table. Um, next, okay so that is our uh, weak entity type and that's how we map weak entity type. Another thing is that a uh, weak entity type can also have normal relationships so this is a weak entity type double rectangle uh, and this is an identifying relationship right double diamond and this is a normal relationship this is a normal diamond so this is connected to a strong entity and this is also connected to a strong entity this is an identifying relationship this is a normal relationship which means that let's say this is um, e1 and this is e2 so if i when i'm creating the table let's say this is e so when i'm creating the table for e i will bring the uh, foreign key from e1 into e 
not from E2, okay, because E2 only has a normal relationship with E, a normal relationship, and this one is an identifying relationship, which means if I have to bring the foreign key, I have to bring it from the E1 table, not the E2 table. So that is about uh, step two, which is mapping of with entity type. Now let's go to step six, which we will see as the final step today. Um, so after step two, we will go to step six. Again, the sequence does not matter. We can follow any sequence. Uh, so we are going to step six now, which is mapping of multi-valued attributes. So if you remember, we actually skipped multi-valued attributes and we only map the simple and composite attributes so now we will look at the multi-valued attributes and how to map them so here uh, department uh, has a multi-valued attribute location this is the only multi-valued attribute in this diagram so we will map this one and uh, for every multi-valued attribute we have to create a separate table so this uh, location is for the departments okay so we are going to create a separate table for department uh, locations uh, we will give it a name the name should some be something meaningful so because it's from the department table I am saying it's called department locations okay then I will give the column so the first column that I have to add is the uh, primary key of the table that this attribute belongs to so the location belongs to department table right so I have to add the primary key of department in this table so I'll add the department number here uh, so do notice that the name of the primary and the foreign key does not need to match it does not have to be the same name we just have to give the correct arrows okay um, and then i am going to add another column the this column is to store the actual location so the attributes name is location so i need to store the actual location here so this column will be the location so these are my two columns this one is a foreign key coming from the de department table so i have to show it with the arrow and i have to underline these two columns so these two columns together forms my primary key so if i see a data wise this is how it will look like let's say i have department d1 which has a location of x y z now this is multi-valued which means same department can have multiple locations so let's say department one has another location p q r so as you can see only kept keeping department number as the primary key will not uh, give me a unique value that's why i have to combine these two to get my unique value that's why both are underlined okay uh, and next is if uh, in a variation let's say i had location which was multi-valued but it was multi-valued composite so it is multi-valued but at the same time it has two components one is building number and let's say floor number okay so in this case we have to combine the rules of composite and multi-value together which means that for multi-value i will have separate table i will again add the foreign key from the uh, originating table and then here because uh, location is composite as well i cannot add location because the location column is not simple component i will add only the simple components here so which means i'll add b number and floor number and as seen before i have to underline these two because location should be underlined but since i don't have any location but instead of location i have these two which together form the location i have to underline those two as well okay so uh, that's how i have to combine different rules together sometimes as well so that was uh, step six which is uh, mapping multi-valued attributes so for today i will stop here in next class in the offline class i will show the rest of the uh, mapping okay um